Hey, we in there. If this don't make you go slap your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, I don't care who it is. If you make this, somebody in the house got to get slapped. I'm telling you, this is how you put it together. This that red beans and rice. You get that Creole Cajun style, right? Here go them good old turkey legs. Buffalo wing style. You can't get no better than that. I don't know what you're asking for, but you got to go slap somebody. But I'm going to show you how to make these some of the best you can ever have. All right, anyway, I'm about to do these turkey legs. You know what I'm saying? Use a 15-minute marinated system, but actually I'm going to let them marinate in there for actually one hour because I have learned that's what tastes the best, and it's a big piece of meat. And, of course, y'all already know turkey legs can be kind of tough but when you let them go marinate all the way through i'm gonna do a sweet buffalo wing sauce for them but i'm also gonna use seasons i'm gonna use oil so i'm gonna start off notice i got my turkey wings in a strainer i like them to be dry they've been in the refrigerator for a while after they thawed out drop one they cut them all up all pretty and shit Oh, if you don't like profanity, you might be on the wrong side. I don't curse a lot, but I just tend to curse a little bit. That's the military in me. I'm sorry. I treat my meat like I treat my soldiers sometimes. <laughs> Drop and give me 50. See, that ain't nothing but a piece of a leg anyway, for the most part. Some nice cuts. I ain't going to lie. This came from IGA. See if we ever go there again. Let me wash my hands real quick so I can touch my seasons and shit. I'll be right back with you. Go back. You know what I'm saying? You always got to wash your hands. I am going to tell you something that I think pretty cool. They come from the Dollar Tree. It's say oil, 125. You make it make me shit. Now, it used to be a dollar a long time ago, but when I happened to get it, well, I didn't really get it. My wife got it, but it was a dollar and 25 cent. But that's pretty cool for a dollar and 25 cent. But anyway, you want to sprinkle a little oil in there. Oil helps everything get married. If you're trying to get married, get you some oil. Like free lubrication. Not a whole lot. Just drizzle you some up in there. Notice I am not going to be stirring that stuff or touching it with my hand. That's why I'm going to teach y'all about this marinator system. But anyway, you want to drop you a little bit of tonis. Y'all know what that is? Get you some of that stuff, that Creole seasoning. Uh, you can go. Uh, you just drop until you're comfortable, man. You got to make sure you season your meat. Another thing is, season is to your comfort, you know what I'm saying? If you want to eat hospital food, you can eat hospital food. It is what it is. I put a little bit of seasoning salt. I'm not big on seasoning salt. I'm not big on salt at all, to tell you the truth. So, it's always going to be under season when it comes to salt for me. Anyway, don't do this at home, but this that Members Mark Sounds Club, crushed red peppers. Drop a little bit in there. We trying to make a good meal, you know what I'm saying? We got to have that goodness adobo you know about that the one with the pepper yeah that's the one you want right there best thing you can ever do get you a little bit of onion powder you gotta have your onion powder sprinkle a little bit in there enough to make sure you're gonna coat all the meat because once it hit that marinator you gotta know what you're doing you know what i'm saying complete get your herbs going up in there drop your complete up in there you feel me I'm just telling you what to do. You don't have to do it, but you want to make sure you do it. Now, you see that? That's inside the marinade. That's about how much season you want. Now, I'm going to go hit the buffalo wing sauce. Yes, I mean buffalo wing sauce. That's what you want. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right, after these messages, you know what I'm saying? I'm back with that good, good. Man, I had to run all the way to Sam's Club to get this. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm just joking, but it does come from Sam's Club. You know what I'm saying? It's that Frank's red hot you want to take you a little bit you know my little bit of your little bit a little bit different so i'm gonna show you that's good you don't need a whole lot you know what i'm saying because most of the work is done by this telling you it's a shelf elite marinator system so that's what most of the work is done by you know what i'm saying but anyway you go ahead and you pop this on now, there's a setting on here. You got to turn it to the middle. That's for you to form your airlock. Then you open your marinator system. And you pull all the air out of it. Anyway, I'm going to get you a little bit up close and personal with it. Hold on. 
that's a little bit better. But anyway, for it to work, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It's the best way to get it to work. You gotta plug it up. It's plugged up, it's ready to work. You cut it on, hit the power button. You heard that, it's ready to make some noise. For you to pull your air out, you gotta hit that function button. Let it pull your air out, you know what I'm saying? You can watch it go through the process for about a minute. I like to clean up after myself, so I'm gonna take this red hot back to Sam's plug. By the way, if you ain't hear me, that's that Shelf Elite's 15 minute marinator system, STX. So you can go pick it up wherever you want to. No, I don't sponsor this product. No, I don't have any endorsements with them. I'm just telling you it's something that I like. That's all I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? It's a really good product, it's really cool. You can marinate meats in 15 minutes. I'm just doing this for an hour cause them turkey legs. Y'all know how them turkey legs work. If you don't, get you some. Uh-oh, you know what that noise means? That means that I can take this, rotate it, and lock it. Because what it did was vacuum all the air out of it. So you know what I'm saying? Once I vacuum all the air out, I'm good. I can put this back in here. I can close this up. Take this. Throw it on here. Hit function. I'm going to set the time for an hour. That's one hour right there. You see what it do? You know what I'm saying? It's like a marinating rotisserie and it's already vacuuming all the air out so once you vacuum all the air out you understand what it's doing now it's building up the meat to be marinated quickly and fastly instead of you trying to marinate meat all night that's why i love it you know what i'm saying people want to marinate meat all night i'm not trying to marinate no meat all night you know what i'm saying i'm trying to do one hour the reason i'm doing one hour like i said turkey legs can be a very consistent meat but if i were marinating something like a steak i do sometimes less than 15 minutes for a good steak now if you go buy a cheap steak you may want to do the old 15 minutes or whatnot but uh yeah i love this system it was a gift uh for father's day christmas birthday i don't know it was a gift you know what i'm saying i would have never thought to get it but it was probably one of the coolest gifts uh if you can't cook <laughs> I'll tell you right now it'll make a person that can't cook be able to cook pretty good you know what i'm saying but anyway i'm gonna let this run for an hour and i'll bring you back after an hour so you can finish seeing the results and see me prep this meal and get ready to put it in the oven you know what i'm saying i'm gonna be doing some beans with this too so i'm gonna run you through how that shit should work you know what i'm saying Anyway, you know what I'm saying? I told y'all I'd be back. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the hour's not up, but I need to get my beans ready to start cooking and everything like that. I'm going to use a pressure cooker. I'm going to do some red beans and rice. You know what I'm saying? But first, I want to get this sausage to work. This is some nice, fresh pork sausage. Freshly made. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you got to cook it first before you cut it up because I want to go on the red beans and rice. So I'm going to saute that real quick and cook it. You know what I'm saying? I'll bring you along with me for the process or whatnot, but I ain't going to sit here and make you watch the whole process. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a little action up in here. You know what I'm saying? Also, whenever you cook with this, uh, use rubber, high heat, high endurance, or use wood. Stop getting these nonstick pans and using metal in them and wondering how you're damaging the teflon and everything you know what i'm saying that don't work too good so wood metal take care of your pans man you ain't got to go buy pans every year making it look you're doing a lot of cooking when you only cook one time and destroy your pan you know what i'm saying but anyway you get the point let them simmer a little bit do what they do next thing you know i'll come back let them cool cut them up try to finish all this before the marination get to going so i can get these red beans and rice going in that pressure cooker anyway i did add a little bit of water to this skillet to help these cook a little bit because i ain't trying to babysit them stand here all day long bring them up the temperature but why do i like to cook my sausage before i cut it off i don't know you know what i'm saying y'all may do things differently but i'm gonna tell you like this i don't like greasy food and when you put your sausage in down you let it cook that contributes to greasy food so you might cook some of the best meals but you realize you don't really want it right then because it's extremely greasy so cook them first you still get all the flavor and you won't have to worry about the grease 
All right, anyway, you see all this grease done cooked off these sausages or whatever, but I like to tempt my sausage, at least get it to about 150 before I decide to pull it off, cool it down, cut it up, drop it in the pot. Let's see what we got. 160. 155, 146, 147, that's the smaller end of it, so anyway, but anyway, they pretty much ready for me to slightly go ahead and cool down, I'll give it about another minute, but I'm going to cool them down and cut them up for you, so. Alright, anyway, this is the pot from a pressure cooker, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, it comes from a Ninja pressure cooker. Yes, I have used Instapot. I still got Instapot, but for some reason, I am a fan of the Ninja. I guess I'm not a big name guy, but uh, I tried Instapot because of the name. I tried multiple ones, and I haven't liked them yet, so I stick by the Ninja. Loyal. But anyway, this is my sausage. Cool down. Go ahead and dump it in the pot. Guess what else I'm going to dump in the pot? People ain't going to teach you how to do these in the pressure cooker, so you might want to go ahead and learn from me. I can get you how to do them in the pressure cooker. So you ain't sitting there waiting 10 hours to cook some red beans and rice. Now, I ain't no water in there yet, but hold on. Let me go grab something real quick. After this commercial break, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, need you one of these. Because you supposedly cut onions up, you cut peppers up, you cut celery up. But guess what? You ain't got to do all that shit. Because you ain't got no onions, peppers, and celery. You know what I'm saying? Which most households, they don't walk around with onions, peppers, and celery unless they run to the grocery store. I ain't trying to go to the grocery store. You can also use onion powder to substitute for the onion. But I love this little thing right here. They come in little packets like that. Mind you, the little things is kind of, you know, hard to open. Anyway, you dump the packet in there. That's what's going to substitute my onions. Now I'm going to go grab the rest of these seeds that I've used. Anyway, I'm back. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Hey, for real though, this shit came from Ollie's 97 cent. Ran out of cayenne pepper, passed by there like, oh, let's do that. You only want to put a sprinkle in there. Everybody can't take it. Hell, I can barely take it. Shit, to tell you the truth. She got me about to sneeze now. Dump you a little bit of crushed red peppers in there. Just a little bit, cause man, you don't know who's gonna be eating your shit. Everybody can't handle that speed. Spice, spice. Alright. It's one of my favorite things. My wife loves this. She keeps multiple in the house. I love it too, now I ain't tripping. Sprinkle you a little bit of that in there. Because you want to pick up that Creole. Because remember, this is supposed to come from Louisiana. What's Louisiana full of? Creoles and Cajuns. So guess what else we got? A little bit of Cajun. bit of garlic seasoning. I'm doing roasted garlic today, but you can use regular garlic. You can do fresh garlic. I do have some garlic in the refrigerator, but that ain't what I'm trying to do right now. You feel me? What's life without completeness? Complete seasoning. All right, that's about it. Go grab you about four cups of water. Fill that bad boy up. All right, you know what I'm saying? Here go your four cups of water. I use warm water. I'm going to take the pressure cooker as long to get hot. But I love glass cups. I'm going to tell you, them little plastic cups you be getting and stuff from the store, man. They last for one use or one dishwasher use or maybe five uses. But they can't measure no more with them. But the glass cups are the best. But they pour funny. So I put the whole cup in it. I should be pouring from the side and stuff. Then you grab your two more cups. So wait for me.
about that end up. Now the thing about it, you want to make sure you stir up all your seeds. You stir them up real good. Now what you want to do, take your spoon and try that. It's beans. It ain't going to kill you. I ain't say try the beans. Try your broth. That's going to be in there. In there like swim with. Trust me. Now hold on while I get this to the pressure cooker. All right, you run this to your pressure cooker. I'm Mr. One Hour Man. You gonna pressure? Make right, sure so you got it high. You want to give yourself an hour. That's one hour right there. You hit that start button. Make sure your vent closed. That button over there rise eventually, and you cooking. So that's what we finna do. We finna get to cooking. Anyway, we back, the hour's been up. I use a pan like this, I'm gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna show you how this works real quick. You grab it off, you can go ahead and cut the power. Now you rotate it back to the airlock so you can evaporate all the air. That's out the way, you can remove it slowly because you don't wanna get no shit on you. Drops that in the sink. Oh my god, it smells so 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 good. Now what I'm gonna do is take them and place them in the pan. Oh my God, this smells so delicious. Now you got the pan lined out. I keep some dish water to my side with a little bit of bleach in it so I can always dump my hands, keep them clean, sanitize, because y'all know how poetry and salmonella is. You don't want to deal with that stuff, man. But anyway, get your little kicking chicken. Sprinkle that bad boy up. Anyway, I got the oven set on 300. I'm going to go grab the last thing and I'm going to put it on here. You already know how we do it. You got to grab you some aluminum foil. Of course, these come with lids, but... Uh, we used all them. I don't know how that happened. I guess it wasn't the same amount of lids as the pants, whatever it is. So I'm gonna put a little aluminum foil on it. Reynolds Wrap, man. No, I'm not promoting for them. I actually found this on clearance. I do a lot of clearance shopping too. And believe it or not, it was 25 cents. Anyway, pre measure, boom. Tear it off. Close that bad boy up. And like I said, I'm cooking it at 300, but I'm going to cook it at 300 for about an hour, you know what I'm saying? That's along with the beans, just cooking and everything. But what I do is, eventually I remove the aluminum foil off of it. And I cook it without the aluminum foil. Right now, you're going to cook all that great moisture and tenderness in it. So, dropping this in the oven for an hour. Be back to see y'all in a little All right, anyway, my beans have... 45 minutes into cooking, I'm going to take them and check them real quick, so I'm going to release the pressure off of here. Let's I will tell you, sometimes I throw a towel over it just so you don't mess the ceiling up. I'm not going to lie, sometimes the thing will mess the ceiling up with all that steam. And of course, sometimes I do it under the stove. That way I don't mess the ceiling up. I can cut the vent on, you know what I'm saying? But uh, right now I don't have the access, so protect the ceiling. All right, now that the pot has stopped making all that noise, I'm bringing it back. Let's open it up, take a look. Ooh, ooh, they're kicking you some beans. 
girl mutt see what's going on take a bean check that consistency that thing was hot actually it was a little too hot now I'm going to show you one tip that was 45 minutes in Look at that bean. That's what you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the beans and transfer them out of this pressure cooker. Alright, I'm going to transfer the beans out of this pressure cooker real quick. Because we got the beans to the perfect consistency where we can get ready to break down that red bean and some rice. Now some people, you know what I'm saying, they like to cook their red beans and rice to uh, separately and put the red beans on it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drop a little bit of the rice in here. Now I'm going to cook it separately. I'm going to keep it simple for you. Oh, I forgot, make sure you put your lid on. The reason I transfer it is to make sure that I can cook it and make sure I keep it the way I want to cook it. You can do it for hour notice. I'm telling you, I did it for 45 minutes. Cover it, let it cook. All right, I'm pulling this out of the oven to check on it, see if I need to rotate anything. This has been about 45 minutes for this as well. So, time to check. Try not to tear the foil up. Getting pretty, getting pretty, getting pretty. Flip it over. Flip that 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 over. this one over, flip that piece over, alright, you know what I'm saying, one second, I got to do this side what I did to the other one, right, alright, I'm back, you want a little light coat, that's it, nothing serious, alright, once you get that, all you got to do is close it back up, put it back in the oven, you feel me? All right, you got to get out of your live. I hear my beans rumbling a little bit. I don't want them to rumble that much, but I want to check them. You still want to make sure your beans don't stick. But since these are kidney beans, there's uh, not much of a difference between the kidney bean and the red bean. Red beans are actually more round, and they taste more like a nut versus a kidney bean that's more outlined, and they don't have as much of a nut nutty taste but you can use red beans or kidney beans for red beans and rice and just giving you the difference between both of them so yeah but i want to turn this down a little bit i don't want to be rumbling that much but my objective is to let the broth thicken up a little bit that's another reason that it came out of pressure cooking. but instead of somebody telling you it takes 10 hours to cook some beans because you got to soak them for five hours and you got to come cook them and do this stuff let your pressure cooker do the work so oh, these will be done in about 15 more minutes. All right, anyway, I just took it out of the oven. It's been about another 20 minutes. What I want to do is I want to check the temperature of it. I want it to be at least about 150 because I actually want to cook it without the aluminum foil so we can get a nice brown, crispy look. This thermometer, yeah, I use them every day, all day. Or else I feed you some raw food. Ooh, ooh. See what that one was. It's 177, 
That means all of this is done because when you're cooking any kind of poetry, whether it be turkey, whether it be chicken, whether it be duck, I don't know what else you want to eat that's poetry than the three things that I would actually eat. You may eat some other stuff, whatever it is. Needs to reach an internal temperature of at least 165 and needs to be able to hold that temperature for at least two seconds. You don't want to be 165 and then drop right back to 162 for the most part. But anyway, now I'm going to put these back in the oven uncovered and let them cook for about 15 to 20 minutes to give it a nice little crisp. And we're going to go from there. See you in a little bit. All right, it's time for me to check these beans one more time. And I promise you it's going to be the last time that I check these beans. And then we'll get to that rice. But you don't need no pointers on cooking rice. If you do, let me know. I might do a video later because it took me about over 30 years, three decades to learn how to cook some rice, whatever you want to say. I ain't going to tell you it's the easiest thing in the world. Could be the hardest thing to cook, if you ask me. Unless you're going to be making some bread from scratch or something like that. But anyway, the broth is starting to thicken up. That's what you want. You want to test your beans and test the level of your bean to make sure you got everything right. Because you don't want to eat no bean that kind of still feel a little woody. All right, I'm about to finish. Go ahead and marry this rice with these red beans, kidney beans. I'm going to start calling them red beans, but you can do kidney beans for red beans and rice. Drop that rice in there real quick. Should slow that rolling boil that's going down. It's up to you how much you want to do. This is about a cup and a half of rice. Stir it in. Oh, make sure you turn that stove down. But once you add that rice to it, if you don't turn that stove down, you can have a sticky, scorched, or burnt pot. Stir it in real good, and then I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna let it simmer for a little while. That way, you can marry up that rice and that red beans broth, which got a little thicker, which is what you want. But anyway, that's pretty much how you make them red beans and rice. You know what I'm saying? And I can tell you, they taste delicious because they smell delicious. They got a little kick to it because you see me add a little bit of cayenne pepper to it. Well, I forgot I did add a little bit of celery seeds. I did that after they came out the pressure cooker. Because you do, if you want, want to use dry seasoning and stuff like that, you want to use a green pepper, bell pepper, whatever you want to call it. You want to use the onion and celery. You don't always have to, but that's what you're looking for. Beautiful. All right, now you got these turkey legs over here. What I'm going to do is flip them one time. Uh oh, you see they fall apart. That's what you want. Flip them one time, cook them on this side, and we be in there. Notice I poured the broth off because you don't want the broth. You want to be able to look crisp. That's what you want. Drop them back in the oven for about 10 more minutes. 